Welcome back to the Average Joe Beer Connoisseur. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Hopefully you can tell that we are not at Helix Tap House. We are actually at the Hotel Indigo in Asheville, North Carolina. Why are we here? If you're wondering that, go watch the last episode because we talk about it. If you're too lazy to go and do that, I will explain it to you. Taylor and I, we decided to do a pack up and go trip. And what they do is you give them information about you, what you like to do, what you like to see, places you have been, places you have not been. Well, you actually don't tell them where you have been. You some places that you have been and places that you will be in the next six months to a year that you're already planning on booking. Um, and then you tell them what you like to do and then they plan you a trip and they send you on that trip. And you don't know where you're going to the day of. So this morning we didn't know we were going to be in Asheville. We opened up an envelope and we showed up here tonight. Um, so it seems pretty cool, but let me tell you the cool, coolest parts about the whole thing real quickly. Because Taylor says I get real long winded because I was talking to a friend on the phone and she's like, shut up. You're giving too much details. So real quick, um, we picked up the envelope, saw that we were going to Asheville. But not only did I say we were going to Asheville, they said on your way there, stop for breakfast. We're going to stop for breakfast at the Alfalfa's in Lexington. Fantastic food, super hipster. So if you're into big hipster people, you'll love it there. If you're not, avoid it. But it was great. Love the food at Lexington. We will be back to Alfalfa's in Lexington. Pictures on Instagram. Yep, thank you. We went from, then they said go from Lexington to Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Never been to Knoxville. We've never been to Knoxville. It's the home of the Bulls. So if you're a volunteer fan, they have a stadium there. Um, in Knoxville, they gave us a bunch of things to do. They said go see the Suns. Sunscape, sun, screen, sunscape, something. Anyway, <laughs> it's this huge tower that kind of looks like a penis. And you go up in it, and then like you can see the whole entire city by going around it. It was built in 1982. Fun fact, it's the last time the Americas had a World Fair. So they built it for the World Fair. It was in Knoxville, um, and you can walk the entire grounds at the World Fair. It's not very big, really. Like mm -hmm. It took us like maybe 20 minutes to walk the entire thing. But the actual skyscraper that you can go up to um, and you can walk around the dome is really neat. That is also on Instagram and it can point you to the direction of uh, University of Tennessee, you know, um, the stadium, all that stuff up there. But what they also did is they said, here's a place for lunch. So they sent us this place for lunch. It was called Sweet Peas. We didn't go because we weren't hungry at the time. But what they also did is they said, we know that it is time. It's about noon o'clock is what they were planning for. They said, it's time to drink. We're like, oh, it's time to drink. So what we did is we went, instead of going there, we went to Pretentious Brewing Company, um, specialized in sours, very good sours. IPAs were okay. They didn't have any stouts on tap. They had a lot of browns and lagers, but specialized in sours. But they also, uh, they made all their own glass. So you could sit there and you could watch them blow the glass. They could, you could watch them sculpt all the different things that they were going to sculpt. And they had their own little shop that you could buy. So that was very entertaining. Um, so she wanted to go to Pretentious. I wanted to go to the Crazy Bastard uh, Brewing Company. So we negotiated and we went to Pretentious. <laughs> As we were at Pretentious, I said, look, Crazy Bastard is like, or Crafty, not I'm sorry. Crafty. It's Crafty Bastard, crafty. <laughs> not Crazy. They were very he's, crazy. He's a Crazy Bastard, but he meant Crafty Bastard. <laughs> it is Crafty Bastard Brewing Company. It was right down the road. I said, do we have time to go there? She said, Eh, we have about 15 minutes to spare. It was a 10 minute walk there, 10 minute back. So we have about 15 minutes there. Walk there, did not disappoint. I had a spicy Imperial Stout, fantastic. Both IPAs we had were good. And you had raspberry truffle that was very strong raspberry. It's actually better than the raspberry that we had from Hardywood previously. So fantastic beer. Make sure you check out both of those places. We picked up a crowler, so we may, may show that on the show later. We'll see. Tomorrow, we'll see. So we <laughs> finally get to Asheville. We're excited to come here. We're excited to be here. And they sent us to this restaurant. They booked us reservations, everything. We got there. We're not fancy people. I showed up looking with a t-shirt and jorts. She showed up in a t-shirt and jeans. Underdressed, so we just left. But the fun thing about it is they booked this restaurant and right next door was a brewery. So they specifically picked this fancy restaurant for us because they knew next door was a brewery and they knew that's what we liked. So we just skipped the restaurant, went to the brewery, it was called Wedge. It was all right beer. You know, I probably wouldn't go there on a normal basis, but if you're in Nashville for the first time, I'll check it out. But then we went from there to Bahrabi, Baharabi, Bahrabi. Just come to Nashville, you'll find it. Fantastic beer, fantastic food, excellent service. Like, I... I'm not even going to talk about it because they were that great. Um, but it was fantastic. The road trip was excellent. And my favorite thing, I'm going to dig in my pocket here, the favorite thing 
about road trips is you find things that can really change your life. And what I found was a glow in the dark tingler ring. This is at a this was at a gas station for about seventy five cents. And it did you get this at the marathon? I did get this at the marathon. Really? <laughs> yeah, seventy five cents gas station. This gas station was broke down as fuck. But they had this bad boy. If you hold it up to the light for about 10 seconds, it'll glow in the dark later. Enhances pleasure for both patients. Well, I'm both patients, though. Oh. Jeez. I work in the medical field, so like it's not I uncommon know, for me to say that. But uh, yeah, so we're excited to see where this goes. We'll talk about this tomorrow. But you want to just tell me about this. Anyways, so, so this is getting a little warm. He's a little long winded, as you mentioned. Um, so, what we have here Bowling Green Beer Works. Really cool place. Um, if you're ever in random Bumblefuck, Ohio, for whatever reason, um, it's in a garage. Took us about three tries to find it. Literally drove by, couldn't find it. Drove by again, still couldn't find it. Decided to park, just walk by. Finally found it in the back of like a parking lot. It's in this little tiny building. Probably about the size of this hotel room. Um, fit about 10 people, I think, max in it. Um, if there would have been like an extra person or two, I probably would have had to sit on his lap. Not really into that, but um, so anyway, Bowling Green she Beer Works. Like <laughs> Bowling Green Beer Works. Not a sexual joke. That's White an Squirrel joke. Belgian Triple, um, coming in about nine point eight, nine point nine percent. So pretty heavy beer here. Belgians can appeal to multiple palates, which is great. Um, they're a little darker than a strong ale. Um, they are a multi sweetness. They have a multi sweetness to them. And um, spicy aroma, normally. spicy aroma, yeah. So we will give this one a try. See how we see what we think. So drinkability, um, pretty smooth actually. For a Belgian, I am typically not a huge Belgian drinker. Normally has a very distinct taste. I think, in my personal opinion, kind of acquired taste. I'm starting to acquire the taste a little bit more. Um, but drinkability pretty pretty smooth for a Belgian. Uh, taste for style again has that Belgian taste. Pretty great taste. Doesn't have a really weird aftertaste like some Belgians do. And I would say, will it get you fucked up? Obviously, it'll get you fucked up. It's almost ten percent. Um, Someone's and... been drinking today. She's just <laughs> dropping f bombs. <laughs> um, so d don't let your children hear this if you're sensitive about not those kind of things. Show. <laughs> Disclaimer: There, do not sue us. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to give this a full bore, actually. This is probably one of my favorite Belgians I've had. So I agree with everything that you pretty much said. Drinkability, it is very easy drinking, especially for a Belgian style. It's 9.8%, but you can't taste the alcohol. And sometimes Belgian styles, like, they make you want to taste the alcohol. Like, that is part of the mm -hmm. flavor. But for this Belgian triple, like, they actually don't want you to taste it. They kind of push it in the background. Yeah. It's there. But you don't know what's there. So like 9.8% is extremely easily drinkable. It's not overly Belgian yeasty, which is very nice. Like it's got the strong Belgian taste like you should expect, but it doesn't linger. It doesn't sit in your mouth. And it's not very heavy. So like it's very easy to drink. Drinkability is very high. Mm -hmm. Taste for style. It tastes like a Belgian triple. It tastes like it's supposed to taste. But what I think what really is great about this one is it appeals to people that might not like Belgians, like yourself. You know, like... It's a, it has all the Belgian flavors that you want, but it's not overpowering. You don't it's linger, right? You don't drink it. It doesn't fill your mouth up. It doesn't like punch you in the back of the throat like a huge cough. Like, yeah, it kind just of like his dick. It doesn't linger. It doesn't, it doesn't punch you in the back of the throat. <sighs> that just, yeah. I mean, <laughs> she's right, but that just anyway. <laughs> taste for style. It does what it needs to do. What are you rating it? <laughs> I was going to give it a three-quarter pour, but if we're laying it to penis size, it might be only a quarter at this <laughs> point in time. Wow. That's a shocker. On that note? Yeah, so I'm going to give it a three-quarter pour. Um, <laughs> I'm devastated. I'm going to go drink more tonight. If you're missing Moose, because he's obviously not here, I do have a friend taping Moose opening his advent calendar. So it might be a little messed up because you're going to... Oh, I hit the button. Fuck, babe. Come That's on. good. It's fine. <laughs> Did you definitely hit the button? 
<laughs> I hope I hit the button. Because <laughs> you farted. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> I knew you were holding it in. When I saw my dick, I just made everyone know how little lady like you are. Anyway, if you wanted to watch the dog open his app and count New York, cheers. Pat, you're in Asheville, things are going on. How was that 75 cent tingler ring? Well, let me show you. As you can see here, it's extremely underwhelming. It is not very exciting. You definitely got 75 cents worth out of it. Uh, yeah, probably won't be buying another one. <laughs> it's kind of neat. So, Asheville's been fun. So far today we've been to Asheville Brewing Company and they have some of the best pizza I've ever had. So if you're in Asheville, go there if you love pizza. They were a finalist in like Pizza Magazine or Pizza Time Magazine or something like uh, Pizza of the Year. So they were a finalist in that. They make a lot of good pizza. Excellent. And you can get it by the slice and the slices are, are pretty massive. So we had a slice of that. Um, then there was a pinball arcade, which was really fun. It's actually a museum. So you pay $15, that's all you can play. And they have like history of pinball and how it used to actually be banned. And, a lot of stuff. It was a very neat museum, and the, your bracelets are good all day. So we left, and we can go back later. Don't have to pay anymore, and we can still play as much as we want. So that was cool. Um, but the beer in Asheville was neat. Scenery down here, it's it's kind of like spread out like a bigger city, but it's got a great hometown, small town feel to it. I actually really like the city so far. Mm -hmm. So. All right. So you ready for the beer? I'm ready. All right. So today we have a Biogenesis, this voter aged sour with passion fruit and strawberry from Speciation Artisan Ales. Fun fact, it was actually um, brewed just for Tavor. So Tavor's um, the package that we get, you know, every so often when Pat decides to fill the cart with 50 beers and spend $400, but. Um, easy. <laughs> easy. But anyway, so um, this one, I think you said, what percent was it? Uh, 6.5. Um, so 6.5% coming in at a 431 on untapped. I'm ready. Cheers. That's a little awkward how we're that. holding it. Really weird, but. <laughs> it's a fart. Oh, well, yeah, it's fuckers. Mm -hmm. So, drinkability it is extremely tart, sour, as you would expect it to be. So, drinkability, you're going to sip on it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not chugging this. I can actually kind of already feel my ass it's building up my stomach, like I need like a Tums. <laughs> um, so, you're definitely going to sip on it. Taste for style, I don't get much strawberry. I'm kind of disappointed like, on the strawberry end of it. I do get the passion fruit. It does have a really good sour. So if you're into really sour beers or really tart beers as well, you're going to like this one. Because it's sour, it's tart, makes your mouth pucker. Um, very tasty. I'm enjoying it. I think my will get you drunk, 6.5%, sipping on it. Now you're probably going to go with something else if that's what you're going for. My final overall rating. I'm probably going to go with a, a three-quarter pour for my final overall. So like you said, um, yeah, very, very sour. Um, my mom actually loves sour. She might actually enjoy this one a lot. Uh, it, it does puck your lips. It's still kind of, I did just had a sip like a minute ago and it's still kind of lingering in my mouth. Um, you can definitely feel, taste the citrusy. Uh, the passion fruit you can taste, strawberry kind of lacking a little on that end. Um, will it get you drunk? If you drink enough of it, but like you said, I don't, I don't know you're gonna wanna like use this to play party games or anything, you're not going to want to chug this. This is kind of a good one for a summer, warm summer day, if you want like a relaxing, like, um, yeah. mellow, like, sweet drink. Um, sweet? Sour. Or sour, sorry. <laughs> um, and I think I'm going to give it go with a three four or three, three quarter four. pour as well. Yeah. Good beer. Uh, this brewery makes a lot of good stuff, you know, especially, especially sours. So I'd highly recommend it if you're ever in Michigan. From Comstock, Michigan. Did I say that right? Or Comstock, like he was trying to. Comstock. So, those. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, 
definitely want to check it out. But it is, yeah, it's definitely sitting in my mouth still right now. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're into that, you'll love this. If you're not, avoid it. So, mm -hmm. all right. You ready for day seven? You know, that's a yes. All right. Well, we got two of them. Ready for the second one? Promise I won't drop it this time. I agree. They were a bit small, weren't they? Obviously, we're no longer in Asheville, North Carolina. We're actually in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee today. We made the pit stop today on the way home. Uh, Asheville was a lot of fun yesterday. If you follow me on Instagram or on Cap, you'll see all the updates that we've been. We went to a ton of breweries, drank a lot of good beer. Um, the craft beer scene in Asheville is really interesting. It's really neat. Like, there's a lot of different places you could go, and they're all really close together. Uh, but for me, I was kind of, I was expecting to have, like, I guess, better beer all around. Like, a lot of their beer was, like, good, but it wasn't great. Uh, Burial was great. Our type was great. Um, Green Man had a select good ones. Liquid Wheat had some select good ones. So, the beer that overall was solid, like you can definitely go and spend a weekend like we did, have a great time if you're gonna go brewery hopping. Um, but it didn't blow me away. Like there's other cities that we've been to that have less breweries that I think make a little bit better beer. Uh, the trip was a lot of fun, a good time. Today in Pigeon Forge, we've never been here. We figured we'd stop here. Um, and it's just a really neat town. It's basically like a beach town, nowhere near the beach. So if you're looking for something like that, there's a lot of stuff to do here, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Chip has made me exhausted, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to take this nice barrel beer here, sit down, watch some Sunday Night Football. Mm -hmm. Titans got to win today, it was pretty massive. Tied for first in the AFC South, so let's just gotta keep going. Let's gotta keep going. So, you can tell me about that. Well, yeah, hoping for a Rams win against the Seahawks today, so uh, let's get this started so we can go watch the game together. So we got Big Bad Baptist Reserve from Epic Brewing Company out in Denver. Um, it is coming in 11.6%. This is actually a blend of their 2018 and 2019, the best ones that they made from their Big Bad Baptist series. Um, so it is an Imperial Stout with coffee, cocoa nibs, and coconut added, and aged in whiskey and rum barrels. So you've probably heard of Big Bad Baptist before because it's like their major Hall of Fame beer through Epic for the most part. They make some really solid stuff. Uh, they do like sours, uh, the Brandless with peaches and things are really good. Um, but the Big Bad Baptist is a big one and they've been making a lot of them recently and um, a lot of different variants. So if you ever get the opportunity to try the regular on the variants, I suggest doing that. Um, we actually had a couple other variants recently, a peanut butter, apple brandy, which is actually, I think we might have an apple brandy barrel later this Wait. month too. So stay tuned for that one for sure. So, cheers. So, drinkability, um, you can't tell it's 11.6%, but you can tell it was aged in whiskey barrels and rum barrels. Mm -hmm. I get like a, a whiskey taste to it for sure. And I was telling this to you yesterday, a lot of places down here will age their beer in whiskey. We're used to bourbon living in Cincinnati. I'm really starting to think beer should not be aged in whiskey barrels. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a mild taste. It, yeah, it just doesn't work. Like bourbon works so much better, and I. The roots and the maltiness. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And everything that I we've had that was whiskey barrel aged, at the beer, the beer just feels like thinner than normal. Mm -hmm. So like the big bad is normally has excellent mouthfeel, but like this one, yeah. maybe because of just the way whiskey tastes or. Something about the whiskey itself, it just makes the beer feel like a little bit thinner than normal. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm getting that here. So drinkability, it's pretty easy to drink for 11.6%. Um, you do get the strong barrel taste in it though. So I, I don't, I get a little bit of rum, but mainly it's the whiskey that's really coming out. Um, so you're gonna sip on it, hence our sniffers here. Just gonna kind of casually let this warm up in our hands and it'll probably last me, you know, probably hopefully the whole first quarter of the game, you know, see. Take my time and sip on this one, let it warm up and get all those flavors. Taste for style, it tastes like what they said it's going to taste like. Um, it tastes like whiskey and rum, and then it's still got like the malty roastiness of a style, which is very pleasurable. Get you drunk for sure. 
Um, mm-hmm. I think for me personally, it, it would take me a while because I'd be like sipping on them and like really letting it warm up to really bring all these flavors out. Stouts are best served about 55 degrees. So I normally say pour them, sip on them, you know, and then let them warm up. So you can see the whole flavor profile as you go through it. Uh, it's always really nice. We'll go out to breweries and stuff and I'll get a whole flight of just stouts and then we'll just put it to the side and then I'll get like another flight of something else. So that's the way I do it. Uh, my final overall rating, I'm gonna go with another three quarter four, I think. Um, I do like it, it is very good, but once again, that whiskey, that mouthfeel kind of like, mm-hmm. does make me want to drink the whole pint of that. Mm-hmm. All right, so um, as I said, drinkability, pretty smooth for coming in at 11.6%. Um, however, uh, taste for style, I mean, it tastes like a stout. You do taste that whiskey, you get that rum, you get a little bit of that cocoa on the back end. Um, roastiness to it. Again, I'm, I think I'm gonna also go for three quarter four. It's it's good beer, uh, but just you know, not not getting me that whole full stout taste that I'm used to or fullness that I'm used to. Yeah, very very solid. Now we gotta drink this and have to drive home tomorrow. I'm feeling pretty rough, pretty tired from that trip. So looking to watch the game, maybe get in the hot tub that they got, relax these muscles a little bit from all the walking and dancing we've been doing. <laughs> so. Let's get it going. Cheers. Oh, all righty, Moose. There you go, bud. I think you like it, huh, bud? Good boy.